Hello darling hearts, it's Gaps Coach Emma here, Timeless Cookery. I had something I wanted to get off my chest. I woke up in the middle of the night, the other night, and I had a, a chain around my neck. And um, in that semi-awake, semi-asleep, liminal sort of hinterland of dream walking, <laughs> I had this sort of like... A vision of, of, of chains around our neck and then thought of the collar and the cuff of the shirt that people wear to work. Um, the blue collar, the white collar, the whatever you want to call it. It's a collar. It's, a, it's, it's, like, um, it's like a sign of being collared and cuffed and chained in a way. And wearing chains around our neck. And then I was thinking, well, I'm thinking of people wear stuff around their neck. Come on, Emma, you know. Um, but there's a different difference between a chain, links in a chain, and that little circuit of metal, which is like an antenna, like in a sprung mattress. If you have a mattress with springs in it, the coils in it, they'd be like little antenna for the EMF frequencies that are flying around. And I kind of feel that way about metal chains around our neck, a chain, link chain like that. And I was thinking, well, what, what, what else would we put, you know, hang around on? Uh, what else would we use to hang things around our neck if you want to adorn yourself with um, bejeweled things? And I was thinking cordage is much more um, natural. It's a twist, isn't it? Cordage um, is basically um, like, like two-ply knitting wool. <laughs> it's, two, it's two cords wound around each other to make a sort of a spiral. And cordage would then therefore mimic the umbilical cord. Cordage would just mimic all natural um, forms because it spirals. Whereas a link with ch a link in chains, it sort of says to me, like cog in the machine, the link in the chain. Do you know what I mean? So wearing chains around our neck, I feel like it's not a good thing to do. And then I went into, um, you know, looking at the, uh, as I was drawing the links in the chain, it sort of made me think of the, the five rings of the Olympiad, you know, the Olympians, um, and how, you know, there's a gunshot to start the race, you know, and it's all about competition. And, um, and then it got me thinking about the rat race and that crack of the gunshot, you know, like the whip cracking, like whip crack away, whip crack away, whip crack away in the rat race, you know. I'm just, no, I'm just, my mind's just wandering about, um, slavery being a slave nation you know with chains around our necks and wearing the collar and the cuff of the blue shirt or the white collar or the whatever whatever you want to call it and being smart in our shirts you know like having a smart look and um, that word etymologically smart look it up you know it means smart lickety split quick sticks spit spot military sort of precision come on smart look smart about it but also it means smart as in you know when you get a smack and it smarts it hurts, it stings, and everything these days is smart, isn't it? I don't think it bodes well. <laughs> <clears throat> smart kind of has connotations of violence to me. Not, um, it's not a nice thing, smartness, you know. It's all about angles and cogs in the machine and chains and links in the chain and I don't know. <clears throat> so yeah, it got me thinking about um, us being in this sort of if we if we choose to being in this realm uh, living in it in a kind of prison that's the only thing it's a sort of an invisible prison you put on your collar and your cuffs and your you know for your shirt and your chains and you you go and do the job to get the money to pay for the thing um you're inadvertently feeding the machine um you're a an inadvertent sort of minion to the a machine. I was an inadvertent minion to the machine when I was working as an actress and I played a doctor on a medical drama and I spouted lines. I've said this before to you guys. I spouted lines like the drug regime is crucial, as is getting to outpatient sessions. So I'll see you next Thursday. All right. For your next lot of drugs. I was a drug pusher. I was pushing drugs for the pharmaceutical industry as my job in my job as an actress for ITV it was in medics at nine o'clock on a on a Friday night it had like nine million views or something because it was in the days when there was only four different television channels you know <laughs> in the days when we used to get paid for adverts I was an actress but I was a minion working for the dark side really 
pushing the pharmaceutical agenda in the name of entertainment, when people were tired at the end of a working week, when they were weakened at the weekend, when they came to relax, to, you know, have a few days off, and nine o'clock at night, just when you're kind of winding down, you've eaten your dinner and you just want a bit of entertainment, so you switch on the telly and there's all these doctors. Da, 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 da. Terrifying music, na, 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 na. you know, and like blood and gore. And I remember I was playing a surgeon and I would um, I would have um, a, a piece of bacon underneath the uh, surgery greens painted with iodine and me masked up doing eye acting and going in with the scalpel, you know, to cut the bacon to make it look like skin. It was really disgusting, horror, horror filled horribleness. I was a minion to the dark side, pushing the pharmaceutical agenda. How many of us out there are inadvertently working for the machine? To be a link in the chain, to be... How many of us are inadvertently being a cog in the machine? Feeding the machine, you know? Not realising it. Maybe being quite happy in our well-paid job. We've got the car and we've got the house and we've got everything we need. You know, the kids are at school and that's being paid for. And, you know, they've got the company car or whatever. And I don't know. Oh, yeah, I was just thinking how lovely it would be for us all to feel free to not uh, be a cog in the machine. And I was thinking about the slave food. You know, when I, when I worked as, when I was an actress, when I was um, at drama school, I would temp in the holidays. So I'd be, um, you know, typing away as a, what was it called, what was I called? It was a, a temp, a temporary employee. You know, I'd go into Morgan Stanley, Ogilvy and Mather, um, the advertising agencies, estate agents, um, the banks, all in the city. You know, I'd be prancing around the city in my high heel shoes, getting taken out by guys in Porsches, you know, who were throwing money around like loads of money, you know. It was wild, you know, it was quite interesting. I never really fell for that kind of lifestyle it, it was a real like I don't really want to don't really want to be here I kept on getting offered full-time positions and I'd be like no thanks thanks a lot but no thanks you know didn't want to be sucked into that world at all so I've been freelance my entire life which is really hard <laughs> it's really hard you have to get up in the morning and motivate yourself you don't have to be anywhere on time but you have to get the thing done so that the thing happens to pay the thing to pay for the thing. You still have to do it, you know, but you're, you're under your own steam. You ain't got a boss telling you what to do. I mean, what I'm saying, I'm also saying, I'm, yeah, take responsibility if you can, you know, and don't be a cog in the machine. But also then we've got to support the ones who are trying to do it on their own. I'm not going to be here forever. The censorship is just rife. I'm already, you know, the, honestly, in the next few years, it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if the machine decided to just wipe people like me off the face of the internet wouldn't surprise me in the slightest so you know while we still have the opportunity <laughs> you've got to get the word out there and now that you have the information if any of you listen to me on a regular basis you'll know the you'll know the drill you'll know what I'm talking about and it's up to you as well to get the word out and tell people to protect the children so that we stop poisoning them with chocolate and crisps amongst other things, you know, but they're, they're the things that people think, oh, it's all right, just a little treat, you know, a can of pop and some chocolate and crisps. It's like, no, give them 20 years on the diet of that and they'll be coming down with cancers and, you know, the works. It's not, it's not a question of junk food, it's a question of, will the human race survive or are we just going to be becoming big cogs in the machine and links in the chain and eventually just plugged into the friggin' machine? Let's not go there. We're not supposed to be like that. We're supposed to be mellifluous and flowing and, you know, constantly moving like the trees. There are no straight lines. Here I am talking to you on this weird little black screen, this little scrying black mirror thing, you know, with all its straight lines in it. But really, we're supposed to be this beautiful tangle of um, spirals, constantly moving, constantly breathing, constantly stretching, constantly eating real foods which are all the animal products, the, the fermented dairy, the, the beautiful eggs, and hopefully the animals have been loved and well cared for and not fed GMO rubbish or soy, you know? You know the drill. You need to get the message out there too. And please help me by getting the message out there to other people because the children don't need to suffer in silence. And the, the, they are, a lot of them are. Lots of, lots of non-verbal autistic children out there. And we're bringing them back. 
we're bringing them back from the toxicity because it's the toxicity in their brain that's causing their brain confusion and causing brain confusion for lots and lots of other people at the same i mean all of, who's experienced brain fog me who's ever had a day where they've got up and gone whoa i just feel like i've got a hangover but i wasn't drinking last night i feel terrible what's the matter with me emf frequencies that's another thing i was thinking about chains around our neck you know and also i was thinking about the oxalates building up in our system what if the emf frequencies are just vibrating them at a certain you know and causing more trouble <laughs> anyway darling hearts thank you for letting me get that off my chest <laughs> i really appreciate that oh thanks for the claps debbie yeah spread the word lots of love darling hearts see me at timelesscookery.com and learn about the food as a medicine and come on retreat this winter if you like let me know if you're interested all right love you oh my friend jenny needs help yeah regarding her child well put her on to me you know put her on to me i've got a really affordable little group it's only 33 pounds a month give you everything you need to know and support and all questions answered that's an absolute bargain you know i can't work out why there are why there aren't literally thousands of people on it and then i could start employing someone to do my marketing and then i could start actually you know anyway it will all happen eventually if they let me keep using these platforms you know i'm already shadow banned i think on instagram because i was getting thousands of views and then suddenly i'm back down to like 200 and it's like what's going on there and i started talking about things you don't want people to know about by any chance anyway onwards and upwards lots of love <laughs> Okay, see you soon. Bye.